Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roblock, and you all know my co-hosts, Justin, Dirt Riding Bird, and Uncle, I'd Rather Buy a New Rifle, Ken. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one-stop shop for all things Harley and Harley related, and Nutsack, the last EDC bag you will ever want or need. Today, we are going over the brand new 2020 models from (laughs) Harley-Davidson. Brand new. Brand new, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Whole lot of air quotes on that one. Uh, Before we jump into it, though, uh, from last episode, for everyone who donates $20 to Project Clean Slate, you will be entered into a drawing to receive a set of Advan Black color matched to your Harley stretch saddlebags. Now, we are limiting this to only 500 entries, and if you want your name entered more than once, donate an additional $20 for every entry you would like. And remember, if you don't win, you can rest assured that the money is going to a great cause, and it is a tax write-off. So head over to BetweenTwoWheels.com, the two is spelled out T-W-O, and click the Project Clean Slate link and donate today. Damn, bud. You been practicing? Nailed it. Can I just say, before we get started, I've got a seed from that jalapeno we ate right before we went on, <laughs> and it's stuck in my back tooth. I'm trying to get it out, but I have to take breaks because I'll try to get it out, and it's burning my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. It's okay. It's just a jalapeno. It's Sorry. not that hot. I just derailed the show like <laughs> 35 <laughs> seconds in. I'm dying over here. Uh, so what's going on, guys? Oh, so much. I got so, some, so much. I got some dope boots on right now. Dude, you definitely have some boots on. <laughs> it's got on. some knee highs on. We get this up and Oh, yeah. Frame. If you want to see this, head over to our YouTube channel. Oh, my God. Yeah, they are literally up to your knees. Eight, 18-inch waterproof snake boots. Wow. <laughs> got the weirdest boner right now. I didn't bring my rifle that oh. I bought. Uh-huh. So, Justin, you picked up a new dirt bike i bought a new to me yeah. dirt bike uh if you want to check that out you can head over to youtube.com backslash bike and bird you can also see well not see but you can hear roblox bust his ass on the trailer Eat shit oh yeah it was bad yeah <laughs> I, st- I actually i got a little wound yeah from yeah him. you can still see it wow oh, yeah 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 god damn i wish <laughs> god if only alicia would have got that oh. or at least got you on the ground because like you hear it and then she just points the camera at the ground I'm like no what are you doing <laughs> she's like i'm sorry i was t-. i was like whatever you want to see the camera wants to see yes. so just kind of get in that habit but. yes i am 100 percent okay that she messed that up oh, i'm sure you are <laughs> <laughs> nothing like but, a fat man on the ground <laughs> wearing sandals <laughs> wearing <laughs> flip-flops <laughs> You weren't wearing shorts, though. That would have been the only thing that would have made that better. Some you were just in, some like, jinkos, some regular, yeah. Some Jinko shorts, yeah. yeah. But, no, I picked up a new-to-me 2013 Honda CRF 250R. Um, got it all dialed in this week. Added on some, some Bark Busters. and The fuck is a Bark Buster? Hand guards. Okay. Yeah, so if you hit a tree, you don't lose a finger. Sure. Um, and then uh, the day after, or two days later... I went with Team Bradley mm-hmm. to go pick up his. <laughs> uh, he got a CRF 230, which is kind of like the trail version. And tomorrow we're going to go out and ride and try not to die. And then if we don't die, I'm going to try to talk Brad into entering a enduro race in two and a half weeks or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. <laughs> From zero dirt experience to an enduro race. Can I be a part of your pit crew? Absolutely. I was actually going to ask you guys if you sure. wanted I'm to gonna... come. Yeah. I'll bring whiskey. Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it should be fun. It's it's kind of like a two day event. I don't know a lot about the race, but <clears throat> my goal would be just to finish. Sure, eh, it's a good goal. Yeah. <laughs> so before you got to the house today, Ken and I were talking about it. With us being as big as we are, mm-hmm. it might make more sense for us to get race four wheelers. No. See, so he, he was. Go ahead and explain. Yeah. So. Although race four-wheelers are cool, I will agree with you on that. Most places, at least in this area, especially... <clears throat> God damn, do I have cum in my throat or what? <coughs> uh, most places around here, at least the, the trail-oriented stuff, doesn't allow quads. No kidding. Yeah, because they, they tear up the trails. That's yeah. Allegedly. But I mean... I mean, go watch Shade Tree's video, man. He he has progressed so much in the time that he's ridden, and I mean, you guys aren't that much bigger than him, so um, I wouldn't know. I mean, he's a big dude. Hey, Shade Tree, when you're uh, when send, we post this, send ahead. me your stats, bro. Send me your stats, <laughs> height, weight, eye color. Yeah, we'll just ask him on the next episode. Okay, we'll do that. Yeah, yeah. hopefully, so, hopefully teaser. that works out. 
teaser yeah so <laughs> we're recording this on friday because he works at was it the dirty shame the dirty shame there in um cracker florida that's that was his term oh okay <laughs> he <laughs> called it really, really i mean it fits <clears throat> i mean yeah. but uh he I, works that would work for any city in florida <laughs> besides miami <laughs> right <laughs> um he works nights on fridays and saturdays so he has said that he is good to go for sunday i'm good to go too I know sweet I didn't tell you. Yeah. All right. So I mean, I was going to go do shooting stuff, but yeah. I guess I could postpone it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. What's What's a couple hours between friends? Yeah. Um, but yeah. So next episode, episode forty four, whatever the hell it will be, um, Shade Tree will come on and talk to us about dirt racing and hair, was it? hair scrambles. Hair, hair scrambles. scrambles. Hair scrambles. Yeah. Because they go by a bunch of different names. It's, yeah. It's really hard to to narrow it down. I know there's a little differences between the few, but hair scrambles and earl racing it's all kind of the same thing i th- i think you know we've we've done the adv episode mm-hmm. this will just be the dirty episode yeah and we'll just go with that dirt focused yeah but back to what we're actually here to talk about tonight <laughs> the brand new 2020 models have arrived so they actually hit the interwebs at 1202 A.M. Wow, because I was I was I was refreshing at midnight. I was late, bastards. <laughs> but uh, yeah, twelve oh two is when they hit, and ah, uh, it was awesome. Was it? it <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> to, to watch that web page just kind of change colors. <laughs> so let's let's jump in toe first here. Uh, the live wires here, nothing special to note that we haven't already discussed. Yeah. It's overpriced, underpowered, underranged. Okay. I wouldn't say underpowered. I would yeah. probably, would probably wouldn't say underpowered. No? Definitely overpriced. Definitely overpriced. I mean, definitely underranged. Like, I mean, if you could, if the rider was able to perform as well as the bike performs, I think it's fast as fuck. Yeah. It's what, 0 to 60 in 2. 3 3. seconds or 2.3 seconds Something or some like shit that. like that? Yeah. yeah. From I, From the people that I've heard that have ridden it at the the dealer show none of them say it's underpowered everyone says it handles awesome they said that the weight is centered very well Mm -hmm. and i've also heard that it feels solid yeah they said that even compared to other electric bikes that's one thing that it has the advantage over it feels like a real bike correct they all agree it's not worth the thirty thousand (laughs) dollars but they do say that it feels like a real bike it doesn't feel cheap and plastic and if everything feels nice on it yeah that's what uh i watched maxwell's video mm-hmm. today and that's what he was saying about it yeah. okay i haven't watched his video yet it is on my to list so outside of the live wire no pan america nope no street fighter nothing nothing crazy they like what you said in our predictions episode justin they're not going to do anything to take any of the the limelight away from the live wire. Yep. Um, moving into the street models, nothing changed other than one paint option. Uh, and shockingly, the prices were not touched. Yeah. So I wouldn't say shockingly. Yeah. I expected that. Well, every other model uh, from the Sportsters all the way through CVO, there were pricing changes. No, really? Every not, single one of them? Not significant. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I well, wouldn't imagine. One of them maybe. was kind of significant. Yeah, but uh, we'll get into that a little yeah. bit later. But uh, let's start with Sportsters. Um, now, <laughs> something to note, they shrank the offering mm-hmm. from 2019 to 2020. They went from seven bikes to only four. And there's only one 883. Yep. So, uh, so what is still here? We have the 48, the iron 883 and the iron 1200 and the roadster. So what's left or what has gone away was the super low, the 1200 custom and the 48 special. What do y'all think? It it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. I think they're just trimming the fat. I don't think that those three they took away sold at all. Exactly. I mean, and especially because I mean, Take the 1200 custom versus the iron 1200. Anyone who picks the 1200 custom over the iron 1200, come on. Wasn't like a $50 difference or $100 I don't difference. I don't care. The, the bike's ugly as sin. Well, 
<laughs> the iron the the iron twelve hundred just looks so much cooler, and well, I think that that has a lot to do with the new generation getting into it. I think mm-hmm. they don't like the chrome; they like the blacked out, you know, urban look. I'm really glad they brought back, or not brought back, but I'm glad that they finally did the red, white, and blue paint job. Yeah, on the iron twelve hundred. Yeah, you know how it was like the red, yellow, and white, and I I even think I even said in in the episode where we talked about, it, I was like, man, I wish they would have done red, white, and blue. They did it. Nice. Yeah. So do you think this is maybe a sign of the waning Sportster motor and with all the upcoming uh, EPA and European environmental changes, do you think that this is kind of the sign showing, okay, we're going to shrink it down to the most popular models, sell those out, and then we can reintroduce or relaunch the Sportster utilizing that brand new motor because it's a modular system it's set up in the pan america the street fighter and the custom whatever they're going to call the uh, these bikes well we know the pan america but that same motor we know it's going to be passing the epa requirements here in the states it does pass the european and asian uh, environmental standards what do y'all think do you think this is kind of the first sign of that well so I don't think the Sportster is going away anytime soon, but I definitely think that they are, well, they, they, they're evolving. Mm-hmm. I mean, they have to. Sure. The, the Sportster is too popular of a bike for for what it is, mm-hmm. for its its weight class. You know, everyone talks about the Sportster being a great starter bike, so forth and so on. It's one of the cheapest models out there, mm-hmm. brand new. But I do agree. I think that they're they're building it. For a new for the new engines, mm-hmm. yeah, I I completely agree, one hundred ten percent. I think that they are going to start waning them off, and then probably introduce a new frame along with that new modular motor. Okay, yeah, I think they'll introduce the uh, like something kind of like the way they do the soft tails, the new soft tail suspension. Mm-hmm. You know, make uh, it yeah easily adjustable. You know things like that. Could be the way to go. I mean, that's. I mean, it's been proven to perform better than the dual shock. So yeah, it would only make sense. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they've had the mono shock in sport bikes for decades. Yeah, yeah, forever. Yeah. So okay, let's move over to the Softail family. Uh, for 2020 model year, we're going to have 11 Softails. Now there was some changes here that were pretty interesting. So we have the FXDR 114 which had a pretty significant price drop. It really did. It's like 2300 below what it was last year. So I, I guess Harley's just right-sizing everything. Do you, do you think now, at, I think it's what, 18.9, do you think that's the right price point for, the, for that bike? I said it in my review. I was like, this thing needs to be priced very close to the Fat Bob 114, and that's yeah. what they did. Yeah. I it's, mean, now it's, it's right in line with it's it. It's the same motor. Yeah. You know? And so it, it really, and there's I mean, no feature just like on one or the other that make it better. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's you know you're you're getting the same motor, slightly different frame, kind of sorta. Well, it's know, the di- same frame, or, different rake know, on the front end. Yeah. 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 A different know, rider triangle. Rider triangle, yeah. ergonomics, things like that. Yeah. It was it was just priced too high. Yeah. Yeah. And I I don't know if that was them listening to the the opinions and making the adjustment or if they're doing kind of what we talked about with the live wire, they had to price it high to kind of recuperate some of those R and D costs and then lower it back down to, you know, standard yeah, consumer. Possible. Well, if we go back just to simple economics, if people were willing to pay for it, they paid for it. Yeah. Yeah. All seven of them. This, <laughs> <laughs> this shows with this significant of a price drop, it shows that people were not willing to pay for it. Correct. Oh, exactly. Yeah. I'm sure the sales were terrible on it. It was, I mean, decent bike. Like I said, in, in my review, it, it handles very good, especially for having a 200 rear. It was yeah. fun to ride. Yeah, it's fun to ride, but yeah. it's not 22,000 fun. Yeah. And or 20,000, whatever it was. And it's another one of those around the city bikes. Yeah, for you sure. Know, you're not yeah. going cruising on this thing. And, of course, people are going to be like, oh, you can go cruising. I'd take my Sportster across the country, you know, 17 times a year. Well, okay, yeah. well, I know you're uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. So... But yeah, that, I mean, the lower than the price, twenty three hundred dollars. That's a lot of money. That's yeah. a lot of money. I yeah. mean, maybe that, not for Roadblock. No, definitely but not. Me, but for me and Bert here, like a couple of days for him. Definitely a lot of money. Yeah. Well, that's a statement price drop. Yeah, well, still. 
period. Yeah. That that shows that that's Harley Davidson's statement. Oh yeah. Um, Heritage, both 107, 114. It's still it's actually the same price now as the FXDR. Um, the I deluxe. Think the, I think the Heritage is a better bike. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, for well, overall, it's a yeah. different. Yeah. It's a different. Um, different, different rider. Ride. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the the deluxe is returning. Um, the Fat Boy only has the 114 this year. Yep. No more 107 for the Fat Boy, and the price point only went up like 200 bucks. Oh, so your Lego kit's a you know collector now. It's yeah. Just the 107 on it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, the Breakout only a 114. The Fat Bob only a 114. That one surprised me. Really? You know, I I think more people wanted the 114 than the 107. I think the 107 is dying out. I think that's. Oh yeah. I mean, that's always what they do. Well, everyone always wants a bigger motor. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And plus, I mean, with the Fat Bob, the difference is only like twelve hundred dollars. Yeah. And, and it was yeah, stupid. Well, and a, on a lot of the models, the price difference between the 107 and the 114 wasn't that yeah, much. It's pretty negligible. And then getting that 114, depending on what model you were getting, you got a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it on some of these, I think like the Heritage, there's one paint job you can only get with the 114. Yeah, and I think that's the same with uh, the Deluxe as well. Yeah, I oh. like that white with on the Deluxe. Oh, it's the sexy. white oh. with the chrome. That looked nice. Um, low riders here are still here. The Sport Glide came down in price. That was that was pretty cool. Um, the Slim and the Street Bob. So what's new? The Lowrider S, which only has a 114 in it. Now, so the Lowrider S did that? Did that go out in you yes. know mid 2000s? It died with the Dyna, didn't it? Yeah, it was the 2017 was the year they did it. Okay, I was gonna say 2007, so probably I just misread it then. Yeah. Okay. 2017. So so the Lowrider S, and help me with this because you were you're a Dyna guy. Mm-hmm. It has a shorter rake than the other softtail models, correct? Which allegedly makes it a lot more nimble. Well, it's not allegedly; it does. It's physics. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> science, bitch. Other than the fact that it's fugly as hell, uh, I don't know. I don't think it's a bad looking. I mic. hate that little want to be fairing yeah. on it oh, I, well. I love it from the, the neck back exactly the yeah. triple trees back i love it i yeah. don't like the fairing i don't like the headlights no. yeah. uh, i'm glad they did i don't a lot of people didn't notice this but they did the full rear fender with the single tail light which that they hadn't done since prior to the the one on the dyna so it would have had to been one that still had the 96 motor in it was All the right. last time they had that on there so and i think it's funny because the Dyna boys, as far as like the the ones that had like the the newer ones, they'd pay a pretty penny to get that full fender hmm. on the the low riders. So, hmm. a lot of people didn't notice that. A lot of people were actually complaining about it. They're like, oh my god, that's ugly. I'm like, I think it looks a lot better than the short chopped one. But I just wish they would have committed a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I mean, they put the the risers on the handlebars, but I would have liked to see some actual real, not something crazy, but like even like a six or eight inch T bar on there. I think it would have been pretty cool. And like you said, a real fucking fairing. That little one they put on it's stupid. Yeah. Yeah, like the Memphis Shades, was it Road Warrior? Is that what is that what it's called? Yes. Yeah, that one looks really good. I agree. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Coming soon to a Fat Bob near you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I'll kick this one off as far as kind of what, I've, what I kind of saw. A lot of price adjustments, both up and down. The models that only have the 114 had a small increase. I mean, maybe 500 bucks. But the others moved plus or minus $300. And most of them were minus. Yeah. So it seems like, again, they're right sizing the soft tail lineup to really line up with Indian's price points and with Honda's price points. Now they're not the uh, Harley and Indian are pretty close in the price point yes. arena. Honda is definitely a lot less, mm-hmm. but that's what I'm. That's what I, I kind of noticed. What about you, Ken? So 
I think it doesn't surprise me that they didn't change much with the soft tail line. I think that outside of people that are beginner riders or buying their first Harley, the, the soft tail line is such an all encompassing line. You can do everything with it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can make it into like you just a mean fucking fast machine, or you can get it to where you're you're touring. Yep. Mm-hmm. And there's just and there's there's just so much you can do with it. But the fact that they didn't change much with it, for one, I think that has to do with the new frame. Uh, I think they I think they're still in in my head. They are still talking amongst themselves, and they want to showcase that frame still. Oh yeah. So they don't want to change anything drastic yeah that's just what i have running in my head right but but i think that I just, the soft tail line is i think it's going to start to become harley's babies oh for sure oh yeah. yeah well that's been their bread and butter family for a long time is the soft tails yeah i mean because well I, yeah but i think that they're really 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 trying to push it mm-hmm. you know and maybe and do it getting getting away from those three sportster models it might push people into the soft tail models yeah i mean just less options you know hey there's you know we've only got four models here but hey we have 11 of them over here right well so the soft tail is the biggest family they have yeah as far as model options cuz let's face it once you get out of the fx line it's all the same. It's just accessories that's well, yeah. really being put on there. So, but yeah, the I think the biggest change in the soft tails is in that FX lineup. And this was because of the merge when they dropped the Dyna and brought the the few popular models over into the soft tail family. But I don't know. I I like soft tails. I really like the new suspension and frame. So, see, and I, I, <clears throat> I really like the Heritage and the Deluxe. See, for me, the Heritage fries me because it's five hundred dollars less than a Road King. Yeah, but if you're not, if you're in, it's th- then that becomes about styling, the yeah. style yeah. you want. Yeah, you know, it's also quite a bit lighter too. Yeah. Yeah, what, well, yeah. 100, 150 pounds or so. Yeah, but for someone who can barely put up a bagger, that... that and yeah, be. I mean, yeah, that definitely could be a selling point. Yeah. You know, they look at it. By the way, Brad dropped his bike at work the other day. Oh, really? Yep. Not the dirt bike? Not the dirt bike. Okay. His big bike. He dropped it on because he was backing it up and slept on some gravel. And Him and fucking gravel. Yep. Jesus Christ. Oh, and two. <laughs> 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 Justin, what are your thoughts on the soft tails? Um, the, honestly, the Lowrider S surprised me. I thought that was a, a one and done type thing. Or not one and done, but I didn't think they were going to bring it back this early. Uh, I'm glad they did because it's um, there is quite a bit of performance enhancement to it. It's got the, the dual disc front brakes, which that's a huge, I mean, that's a $900 job right there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, thought it it, I thought it was a really popular model, wasn't it? It was, but... I don't know. It's kind of like it's kind of like Whataburger and their fucking spicy ketchup before it was a full time thing. It's like they they brought it and they took it away and they like, brought yeah, it. Like they make rib and shit. And like that. Yeah, I just I don't like that happening that like quick. Like yeah. spread it out a little bit more. I mean, two what three years? I don't think that's enough time. So, do you think that they're going to bring the Dyna back? No, no, you don't no, think it's so? dead. Nope, not a chance. I actually saw a picture where they had taken the the louder with Crowder. It said, uh, "The soft tail is a superior platform." If you disagree, you're a whiny little bitch. Changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, I'm honestly shocked we didn't see more S models. I thought for sure we'd see a Fat Bob S, but even a Sport Glide S would be pretty cool. But oh yeah, Sport Glide. You know they'd they'd color match the bags at that point. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I think it would sell. I really do. I think it would sell a lot. Yeah. But, yeah, not nothing really nothing right. really surprising. Well, when we return from our break, 
we're going to jump into the touring models and the CVOs. Nutsack is the only EDC bag the crew carries, and for good reason. They're crazy and awesome. They get their name because folks said they had to be nuts to manufacture a man bag in America with American waxed canvas, American leather, and American labor. We want you to join us in the two-week challenge. Buy a bag from them, use it for two weeks, and if it doesn't completely change the way you carry your everyday gear, they will give you a full refund. We absolutely love ours, from carrying around extra mags for our concealed carry, to earbuds, sunglasses, vape stuff, and business cards. It is great having less shit in our pockets, and it was because of the nutsack satchels that we were able to be less weighed down. If you buy using our link, Nutsack will give you $5 off to enjoy a beer. Head over to nutsack.com slash b2w, that's n-u-t-s-a-c dot com slash b the number two w to get yours today we are back so touring they knocked two models out Good. this year only leaving us with nine <laughs> only <laughs> uh so what's still here we have the electric light standard the street glide the street glide special the ultra limited the road king the road king special the road glide the Road Glide Special and the Road Glide Ultra. So they dumped the Electric Glide Classic and the Ultra Limited Low. I yes. don't know. The only other thing I really saw was paint. Well, hold on. Oh, wait road... a minute. What did I miss something? Yeah, you You're, fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> what did I miss? You, like a lot, like a <laughs> like a big thing. What did the, I miss? The, the, the biggest R thing. The RSDS or whatever it's called. Oh no! I was talking about the. It's no longer the Road Glide Ultra. It's the Road Glide Limited, I think, or Road Glide Limited. Something. Oh, you're talking about that. Yeah. Oh. oh and well. then offering the blacked out options and fucking blew up my goddamn yeah. private message. Like, oh my god, they copied you. I was like, oh, I'm kind of a badass, so it doesn't <laughs> surprise me. <laughs> Did you see the people arguing my comments? Like one guy asked, he's like, "What do you feel about Harley copying your design?" Then so the guy's like, "You really think they copied his design?" And they just went back and forth at it. <laughs> Well, people will argue about anything. Yeah. I was like, I, it makes me feel good because it's like I'm at least designing stuff that a, a person who got paid a lot of money to design a bike is doing. So Look, and you got to think of it this way. They may not have copied you exactly, yeah. but I guarantee that they know about you. You think so? Absolutely. Nah. I guarantee you that there is someone. I'm not on anybody's that, radar up there. I guarantee <laughs> you that there is someone in Harley that pays attention to all the Harley thing that that go on on social media. Yeah, I guess I could see that. Yeah, because because how else would they, you know, really keep their finger on the pulse of society? Yeah, because I really doubt a lot of people are going in and be like, "I love this Road Glide Ultra. I just wish it was blacked out." Like no one was looking at freaking, you know, geezer glides like that. <laughs> so it's no longer the Ultra; it's the Road Glide Limited. I believe so. Okay. Either way. Either way, it's, it's the same fucking it's the same thing. Fucking it's just, but thing. it got the it got the one fourteen motor. And it got the, um, you can get it in chrome or black. They didn't distinguish, like, mm. um, it, they didn't put, like, the Roguelite Limited Special. It's just okay. you can get it in either the chrome or the black. Okay. I'm looking it up. There you go. <laughs> so. Solid research on this show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah. You are correct. It is the 2020 Roguelite Limited. Yep. That's fucking it looks stupid. Dope. It stupid does. name, but it looks yeah. dope. Well, I, I guess it does line up with their ultra limited and yeah. all that. I mean, you know, it looks nothing like his. No, nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it doesn't have all that gay red shit all over it. Right? That's facts. I was like, people can just buy that, take it to a powder coat shop, and they'll have an exact replica. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. A lot less work. <laughs> a lot less work. <laughs> what, you, what you need to do is you need to get some of your little little uh, bike and bird decals and go put them on. <laughs> like the brake calipers. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Uh, Hank will be like, what are you doing? We're like, don't, don't worry, worry about it. Don't worry about it, Hank. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Ken, let's start with you. So, well, we knew we had, we'd already heard that they were getting rid of the Electric Eye Classic mm -hmm. and the Low. Uh, they just, from what I understand, they weren't real popular. And then with the, the Ultra Limited Low... It was only lowered by like an inch. Yeah, it was not stupid. even. It was like three, three quarters, quarters of, an of an inch. inch. Yeah. So there, and like it had a slimline seat, I think is what it had, came stock with it. 
So, I mean, it's the same fucking bike as the the other Ultra Limited. Yeah. Just they can they throw on the low and oh hey it'll be better for short people or or whatever. That so that doesn't surprise me. But we already knew that was going to happen. Uh, just more paint. Yeah. And then. They do have the new tech that came out with it. <laughs> Hold on, can we address the freaking river rock denim, or what, what they call it the the gray river rock denim, or river rock gray denim, something like yeah. that? It's got the name gray in it, but it's fucking brown. Like it's like almost the color of the walls. Oh yeah, river rock gray and vivid black. Yeah, it, it's color. not fucking gray. It's brown. <laughs> no, like I just show my wife. I'm like, I'm not colorblind, right? Like this is fucking brown. She goes, No, that's very brown. <laughs> yeah, that's it's 100 percent brown. 100 yeah. percent brown. But I yeah. do, I do actually like that brown. Oh, God. Sorry, I do. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm gonna go out and buy it, but yeah, <laughs> I like it. Well, it's like you know the the river. What's it? What's it called? River rock gray. Is that what it says? River rock gray. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like in the Air Force, we had this paint called topside gray, and it's sand colored. It's khaki, khaki. (laughs) but it was called topside gray. So you know, I'm I'm not a color expert at all. I don't know how they come up with what's the difference between salmon and fuchsia and it's a, pink. It's a dartboard. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding, right? <laughs> no, I actually read a, uh, an article about that. It's, it has to be unique to the point where they can actually, you know, trademark that color. But you can't trademark a color. You can, you can trademark, trademark a color name. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you could call this Fantaberry Blue and trademark that and nobody could call this Fantaberry Blue. Right. Because that's important. (laughs) Because that's important. Yeah. I I get it. Uh, I'm I'm right there with you. I think we saw this coming. Um, One thing is the things you could get on the Electric Light Classic and the Ultra Limited Low, you can go and buy out of their P&A catalog. Yeah. Like it's nothing. Yeah. And why have extra models sitting out there that no one's buying and when people can get the bike they want in the color they want and just go add on a lowering kit or a a slimline seat i i i get it um but you were talking about the tech before i interrupted and derailed the show for like a fifth time yeah (laughs) it's fine um tire pressure monitoring system is now in the Harley Davidson P&A catalog. It's only um, like seven years late. Yeah. And it's only like three or four hundred dollars, I think. <laughs> Fuck off. Um, I think it's two ninety nine. Is it? I think is what it is. <laughs> uh, Plus one, probably like a fifty dollar fee to activate it. <laughs> well, you have to go get your your uh, computer flash yep. and all that. Oh, yeah. That's an hour of labor For right sure. there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh <laughs> <laughs> can we can we just say like this is going to be a blanket statement everything that's new on this RDSD P Elemental Q is all stuff that's been on the metric bikes for at least 5 years. Yeah. Yes. The hill start, I mean we were looking at that on the ADV bikes. I mean every other company's had it for years. Well, um Indian has it on theirs. Do they have the hill start? Yeah. Oh wow. Um, so yeah, there's the hill start. They have, um, the the only one I thought was cool, but at the same time, it's like, it's almost like training wheels. It's making people worse riders. I mean, I guess depending on where you live, you know, what part of the country, depending on, you know, if you deal with that a lot where you live, I mean, think of like Eureka Springs, some of those hills, eh, it'd be helpful. I'll just put your fucking rear brake on. But you be, know, for, be a better rider. <laughs> for, for some people, that doesn't work. You know, if, if for shorter people, that might. You know. Yeah, I can see that. Maybe. I, I'm trying I, to find what it's freaking called. I don't know. I think I nailed it. <laughs> RDSD <laughs> element of Q. I think that's exactly what it's called. Well, God, you know. that low rider S is ugly, dude. <laughs> 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 I, just, I like that blue though. Oh, that new blue? That t- Tahitian something. Oh, birds. What's up with the fucking birds? I, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> if you go to the other one, there, I think I went to the Road King and there was like a fucking coyote yeah. in the background. <laughs> oh, there we go. The reflex linked. So 
One of the new things they have is the HD Connect service. <laughs> so fucking stupid, too. Um, which they Ooh, did this me. on the live wire. Yeah. So now it's coming to uh, a touring bike near you. Um, At what, $100 a year? Is it that cheap? Your first year's free. <laughs> hey, your first year's <laughs> free, man. When you, when you buy uh, a new one, the first year's free. But yeah, it's a cellular connectivity where you can connect your bike through your smartphone using the latest version of the Harley Davidson app. Whatever. In essence, you can check your fuel level. Tell me more. You can check your fuel level, find out where your bike is. Uh, you'll get an alert if someone tampers with your bike and, and much more. Okay. Whatever. Fuck off. You know... I get it. Low Jack is gone for motorcycles. They've stopped selling the subscriptions for them. Okay, fine. But is this is this even good to have? I, I don't see a purpose for it. I really don't. Yeah, I mean, check your bike's fuel level. <laughs> get tamper. I mean, it really all it is is a glorified alarm. I mean, I mean, it, not even that. It kind of made sense on the live wire just for the charging alerts because you're going mean, to have hey, to yeah. do something for 45 minutes to two hours. I mean, if it's going to let you know, hey, it's charged. If that they makes want, sense. But a fucking fuel level? If they want a fuel level warning, they need to put that shit on the sportsters <laughs> <laughs> where they the don't fucking have fucking ga- fuel gauges. <laughs> yeah, like it's a touring bike. It's got a fucking fuel gauge. Are you, are you trying to scroll to the right? Yeah, and it's not letting me because of this adaptive fucking website. I mean, I can 100% read it now. <laughs> I like that billiard red, too. That looks good. I want to see it in person, though. And yeah. the new wheels. I really like the I new wheels. I do love those new wheels. Um, but, yeah, so that's something that is new on the um, specials mm-hmm. is you get really badass rims. And I don't know if you looked in the parts and accessories catalog uh, for all the new stuff. They have them in that... Uh, goldish bronze. Oh, cool. So they've actually added a lot more of the parts and accessories that they that they should have had for the touring bikes. They've just added them. So like the Dominator series, uh, kind of the ones that match my grips. Yeah. They mm-hmm. actually have the floorboards for them now. Finally. But at a $400 price tag, I'll go get Joker Floorboards oh, I like those that floorboards. are so much cleaner looking. Oh yeah, and the same price. Just powder coat them. God damn. Yeah, I can't scroll at all. Do you need to click and drag? No, it's the website's all fuckered up. <laughs> but <laughs> so, so I have it pulled up. It, it's called the the Ref, Reflex trademark Defensive Rider System R D R S. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but it's optional. Jeez. So so yeah so the the features of the RD RDRS are bundled together except we're noted RDRS that's so fucking Erders Erders <laughs> Riders <laughs> features are standard on all 2020 Livewire CVO Police and Trike models and are optional on the Touring models. All right, so it's designed to match motorcycle performance to available traction during acceleration, deceleration, and braking. The systems are designed to aid the rider in controlling the vehicle while accelerating and braking in a straight line or while in a turn. A rider may find the systems most helpful when riding in adverse road conditions and in urgent situations. The systems are electronic and utilize the latest electronic braking controls and powertrain technology. The features of RDRS are bundled together. What? What? Fuck you. I don't want my bike automatically braking. And that's one of these things. And uh, why would you need help when accelerating or decelerating? Yeah, it's not so, like these bikes are, like, breaking loose, like, crazy. Well, so, like, when decelerating, so that drag torque slip control. That's the only one I would utilize. So that's when, if you downshift and you don't rev match, yep. it keeps your rear wheel from locking up. Once again, become a better rider. <laughs> I, I didn't know that was a thing. Oh, it's definitely a thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've slid my back in now I've done numerous <laughs> times doing <laughs> Quite that. a few times, and it's... And yeah, you always feel like an idiot when you do it. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, vehicle hold control is part of it. Um, the primary function of vehicle hold control or VHC is to use brake pressure to keep the motorcycle from rolling. Whoa, 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 whoa. Brake? That's how brakes work? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, it's not n- intended as a substitute for a parking <laughs> brake. Wait, wait. Do motorcycles have parking brakes? Trikes do. <laughs> I know the trikes do. Am I missing a switch on my bike then? <laughs> like, I don't have a parking brake. Well, all all motorcycles have a parking brake. It's called first gear. <laughs> yeah. And a kickstand. <laughs> and a kickstand. <laughs> um, but the tire pressure monitoring system, that's nice. I, so, I'm curious. Does it say, does it actually give you the PSI or does it just alert you when it's low? Oh, man, that's a good like point. It looks like it just alerts you when you're low. Oh. I bet you that's what it is. Is that what that is? Like they're low? That's a fuel. That's on the gauge there. Low. It says low, low range. range. Oh, low range. Because he's got no gas in there. Yeah. So, so you know you're good to go. So literally, like you can connect with your freaking thing and be like, look at your gas level instead of just fucking walking into your garage and checking it. Yeah. <laughs> so huh. cor- corner link braking. Uh, I mean, it's kind of cool. The, I mean, link braking in general. But that's been there for a while. The link braking has, but this is cornering. Cornering. Right. Okay, I I usually accelerate in a corner, but if you need to stop in an emergency situation or during adverse riding conditions, yeah, like the Twisted Sisters or Dallas, <laughs> the entire city, all of Dallas. <laughs> so you wouldn't be turning though, fucking <laughs> <Like> straight. <laughs> so, so sorry about the little tangent we we had to go on on that. So so the 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 TPMS. Is like three hundred dollars. Yeah, you can go on Amazon. Yeah, and for a hundred dollars or less, you can get TPMS for your yep. bike. Yeah, it's and it'll tell you the Bluetooth. exact PSI. Any vehicle. Yeah, it's Bluetooth yeah, it's to blu- your phone. R- yeah, and it Bluetooths to your phone, mm-hmm. and it's a free app. Yep. <laughs> no, no annual subscription. <laughs> God. Oh, I feel like this is just a reoccurring conversation we have every single August. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Look, they're trying. Well, you, I mean, they really are. They're, you know, they're adding in, you know, well, they're making linked braking, you know, more of a thing. Yeah. All right. Cornering ABS. All right. ABS works. It's proven to work. Mm-hmm. Unless, you know, you're on dirt or whatever. I mean, ABS does work. It does save lives. Cornering ABS. It would have saved Brad from eating shit on the first 30 seconds on his dirt bike. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> hold on. Here comes D rail number six. So we pick up his bike, go back to his house, and he's got like this little field back behind his house. So he gets on it, and I was like, "You can, you know, you you take the first ride, then I'll hop on it and, and do some stuff." And he fucking goes, makes a loop, comes around, just he's going probably about twenty miles an hour, and just grabs a full fistful of front brake and just, <laughs> boom, just the front end just whoop, and his face just goes straight into the grass. You just see grass just. <laughs> <laughs> You yeah, didn't get any video, did you? No, dude. God. I was like, there's no fucking way he's going to fall. Like, he's just doing a circle. But nope. Just grabbed a I mean, fistful well, I mean, of front brake. We never expected him to, to fall at the bent rim grill because no. it's just gravel. And, yeah. and he did. Yeah, and he definitely did. And then he asked me, is there a reason why my bike wouldn't turn over? I was like, is your fuel switch on off? He goes, yep. <laughs> Again. Again. That's twice now, right? That's twice. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> at least he didn't let the battery die. That's true. Yeah, I think I think that's going to be a thing. We're just going to have to turn his gas off randomly. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> totally doing that tomorrow because this will not. Come <laughs> yeah, he won't be able to hear. He this won't one. be able to hear this. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait till you're like all the way out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Get off and like I don't know, like you're looking at something and just yeah, flip the shit off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Love you, Brad. Sorry, back to the back to the episode. <laughs> yeah, so. One of the new color schemes on the Road Glide Special, it's the black and uh, whatever the fuck blue, looks really good. I think the colors look good. Yeah. I mean, usually Harley does a pretty good job on the colors. Yeah. I want to see something stupid, though. I want to see, like, like a lime green or a like a plum crazy purple. Well, that's on the, the new lime green is on a... It's on the live wire. The live wire. But I want it on a real bike. <laughs> oh god i was gonna clip that <laughs> oh man not a real bike not a real bike um so let's move into the cvo's um god 
this year they they stuck with only three models um same as last year however they dropped the road glide and went with a fucking trike yep of okay here's where i see this happening the people who ride trikes are the only people that are old enough and stupid enough to pay the CVO prices. End of rent. It really, really kind of doesn't surprise me. Well, so <laughs> this is. I'm looking at you and the person who almost bought a CVO. <laughs> right? <laughs> Look, if I buy a CVO, but it's going to be like five years old. <laughs> you were looking at the Battleship Gray, which I approve. Yeah. The coolest CVO to ever exist. Uh, it's the first Harley to get. To fifty thousand dollars, it's forty nine thousand five hundred for a California based buyer, and that's because of the added cost for your y'all's emissions. Forty eight nine nine nine. Jesus Christ, <laughs> um, bro! Like that's more than the truck I want. That's literally twice, more than twice. Like that's oh. that's like a Tundra TRD Pro for sure. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, and it, oh, it comes in two colors. Oh, really? I only saw the one. Black Stardust with magnetic gray and wicked red. (laughs) Fucking Stardust. And Blizzard White Pearl with lightning silver and storm cloud. Okay, let's see that one. Let's see that one. Is that really what they called it? (laughs) Shit you not. Look at it. Look at it. (laughs) So what happened was... Wow. That's the best they could come up with. (laughs) That is is their fucking CVO colors. Yeah. Okay, so the black... Wow, that's not even cool. No. I thought it was going to be like that one. So it's not even cool. No. The trike light, I thought, only oh, had man, one smoke. color. <laughs> no, it's oh, it is, It's white. Okay. So okay, get, so it looks better on the big screen. Because no. you can kind of see the red. It still doesn't look good. It looks better. <laughs> but that's, that's the only pop, it is pop of red. It's so fucking boring. It's, it's wow. a white and gray. With more gray. Harley, please, for the love of God, let me design a CVO. Holy shit, that is bad. Go back to the black one. Wow, that is so boring. Okay, so that paint, I mean, it's and boring. It's all chrome. But it, it, it is a boring paint job, but it's not a terrible paint job. <laughs> There's been not, worse it's CVOs. Not a, it's not a CVO paint Correct. job. Yeah. I could see that on one of the standards. Yeah, so. Okay, so let's check out the CVO Limited. CVO Limited. Okay, that one's not bad. It's sitting like in the, the clouds. Light. It's still super basic. Three colors. Here we go. Sand dune. Okay, I and do. And that's gray. I do like the <laughs> that's, sand that's 100% dune. That's gray. Yeah. <laughs> but I like that little added flare like they it. put on the saddlebag. It's different. It's definitely different, yeah. Okay, let's see. Smoky gray and storm cloud. Okay, same I'll, thing. I like that one a lot, I like that actually. one better. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Moonlight yeah. blue and deep sea blue. Blue on blue? Wow. I don't like it. That's hideous. Yeah. Don't no. like it at all. That, that The middle one, though, that gray. The middle one is, is pretty cool. And it's yeah. got the black motor. I like this one just because it's basic. Oh, I like that one, too. Yeah. I, I, I bet that looks better in person. I oh, agree. Yeah. Oh, For yeah, sure. definitely. So <laughs> with the CVOs, if you do not like bat wings, good, because you're not going to be spending yeah. $45,000 or awesome. more. Or the street glide's only forty. Uh, you're not gonna be spending that extra money. Ooh, I like that. Yes. I don't like that they put the heavy breather on it though. Yeah. Okay, so we have smoky or black stardust, stardust fade. fade. Oh, I didn't even. Okay, it, see it is that. a fade. Yeah, that's so like the Mako. I wish they would have done black motor with it, but. And then there's a sand dune. Again, I like I the... I need to see that bad. sand dune in color. I like the accent. In person, not in color. I like the wheels too. The yeah. wheels are dope. Smoky gray and black hole. That's my favorite. Uh, like that. What was that yep. retro styling? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Head over to the Harley webpage and check that one out. Yeah. So the CVO Street Glide. I like how they connected those lines. Oh, they did. Damn. See, that's little touches that you expect in a CVO model. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Agreed. So, yeah. CVOs, they're CVOs starting at $40,000 and going all the way up to 48,500 or 49,500 yeah. mm. before tax title and license. Jesus. I I can't spend that money on that bike. I think their paint nope. jobs were terrible pretty much. Yeah, I would I'm say gonna, this I'm has been the worst. This has been the worst paint schemes for the CVOs in a hot minute. Yeah. So it looks like the smoky gray and black hole 
is the only one that comes with the heavy breather. Yep. Hmm. So there's there's some little things that are kind of cool. Um, it's but, got the micro mustache engine guard. Yeah. Um, so if you want to turn it into an ultra, or if you want lower fairings, you're going to have to spend a lot more money than you should have. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so that's... That's what has happened this August with the model year 2020 release. Another letdown. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so closing argument. What is your favorite change for model year 2020? And what surprised you, Ken? My favorite change for the 2020 release. Man, that's... I'd, I don't know. I really can't pick one. I'd rather shit my hand and clap. <laughs> Nothing spectacular going. I mean, okay. Biggest thing would be the the murderers, 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 murderers. Yeah. RDRS. I mean, you know, really getting into the length breaking, even though it's been around forever. Same with cornering ABS. I don't give a fuck about the connectivity. You know, I'll go check my bike and open my fucking fuel tank, but. I mean, it, it needed to be done. That technology is there. It's other motorcycle companies have it. Mm-hmm. It's taken Harley way too long to incorporate it into their bikes. They didn't even have that shit on their CVOs previously, and now they're just no. oh, okay. We're going to put it on all of them. I well, make it, was, it an option. I thought it was optional <laughs> on the CVOs last year. I don't think so. Oh, actually, no. The Ruderers was a is brand new for it's them. Brand new, yeah. yeah. So. All right. And as far as surprises go, uh, I'm surprised that the CVOs have shitty paint. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I'm kind of surprised they have a, uh, I guess I'm kind of surprised they have a trike C- CVO. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm, I'm kind of not. Yeah. No. It's, I said you got to follow the money. Yeah. Okay. Justin? Uh, my favorite change. <laughs> I guess my favorite change would be that they uh, lowered the the price of the FXDR. Oh, okay, yeah. To kind of be in line. I done forgot about that. Yeah, I mean that's really it. I also really like that white on the deluxe. Mm-hmm. I think that looks really cool. Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, there's there's really yeah. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I really like that they did the uh, road glide limited mm-hmm. because I do think that for people that don't want to spend six months tearing apart their brand new ultra and turning it into, you know, blacked out, they have that option now mm-hmm. without having to spend a gob of money in, you know, mechanics and powder coating and all that. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I think that is going to kind of entice more people in kind of my age range to maybe go for the geezer glide, especially once they, you know, see the benefits i mean you guys saw the benefits y'all both got tour packs you see how awesome they are they're excellent they're so amazing uh surprises i'm gonna have to go back to lowrider s i did not expect them to rebirth it so soon mm. i think it's a good rebirth um don't exactly agree with the front end but from the neck back like we said pretty cool looking bike but uh just the quickness of the rebirth is what surprised me all right cool so my favorite change does not exist. There's nothing, no changes outside of the the pricing that meant shit to me. Yeah. The surprise was the trike and not that they went to a trike. I agreed with John Maxwell when he said that he sees one coming. Yeah. Um, I'm shocked they went with that one with the full everything on there. I thought they may stick closer to like the street glide version of the trike. Was it the freewheeler? The f- yes, oh, yeah. I believe so. Yeah, it doesn't it's, have it's the tour pack without on the, the tour back. pack. Yeah, and I think it it looks slicker, and it gives more of a <laughs> I'm gonna say it high performance trike yeah. look. Um, I mean, I think that, honestly, it was funny that you mentioned that because I was gonna say that when I saw the white one, I was like, with a couple little color changes here and there you could have made that look like a high performance strike 
Yeah. Like just imagine putting red calipers on it. That alone would have made it look oh, yeah. ridiculously yeah. more high performance. I mean, the difference between the, the freewheeler and the, the tri-glide is shit. Six thousand dollars, seven thousand. Yeah, yeah. And I, again, I don't know. I don't haven't looked at these things outside of just actually seeing them. Yeah. Visually, I couldn't tell a difference between the two, other than that big ass tour pack. It's the the whole rear end is different. Yeah, the whole. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So that's that's kind of where I'm at with this. Um, I don't know. It, I, this this one I think the mid year I agree I was about is to gonna that. be more spectacular. Yeah. Um and I know they they really push the live wire for the August or the model year twenty twenty release. But I wanna see that mid year. I think yeah. th- you know, we should be seeing at least two brand new models, possibly three, but I'm doubting it. I'm with you. Uh, on the custom, I think they're going to hold off yeah. until either August of next year or even another mid-year. But, I think uh, this dealer show is just the gurgitation of live wire with oh yeah a couple different paint jobs. That's, yeah, yeah, it's all about the live wire. Yep. But uh, but yeah, I <laughs> I'll go ahead and break the news. Oh, oh hell! I am trading in the white road glide special, and I'm going with really? I'm. I, I'm I'm pulling the trigger now because all the bugs have really been worked out with the entertain, infotainment center mm-hmm. system or whatever. I can get that to work with uh, Apple CarPlay without having to buy all the Harley branded bullshit. And I'm I want to play with that 114. <laughs> what a so what, what's the time frame on this? When, when? I think this one's a record, honestly. What do you mean? I think you've kept this one longer than most. Since we've met. Since we've met. Yeah, since we've met. I've only had three bikes. Only three bikes. It's a bike a year, bro. <laughs> Damn. Uh, but no, I, I guess I, I can't really talk. Uh, <laughs> but, I you're, actually, but you're buying and, and selling. Customizing and flipping, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I've customized this one. Okay. Ooh, name all those bars, lowers. You are not allowed to fucking talk shit about my paint and parts builds if you're calling that customized. <laughs> Anything that's not stock is custom. Oh, fuck oh okay. <laughs> no, so I am looking at, and I was talking to Ken with about this earlier. You want that blue one, huh? No. No? No. The blue looks dope, though. It does. It looks beautiful. Did y'all go see it in person? No. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I'm, um, I'm going to go vivid black. Because How are you going to find your bike when we leave places? Simple. <laughs> I'm going to get it wrapped. Really? Yeah. So I'm going to talk to some local places. I may have to take the parts off the bike myself. Yeah. Take them up to them and have them wrap it. But a couple of ideas. And I need to find. Oh, I feel sorry for those sons of bitches that have to wrap that thing. <laughs> I, I, I need to find someone. And if any of our listeners I know a it. great rap guy. So uh, I need to find someone who has the vector image of a road glide special. I can do that. Do you easy. have it? I don't have it, but I can make it extremely easy. Okay. Well, I just need a vector of that. And if we can get our hands on a vector for a road king, 2014 to 2016 road king. If we can get a vector for that, then we can start working on renders for Project Clean Slate. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels Podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace. I, 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 I